Once more, good evening, and we're here for our Bible study. Last week we took a break, and certainly we want to be running on as we continue in this study that all of us should pay interest to, knowing that we are talking about the Holy Spirit, God's Spirit, the same Spirit that was there in creation. Same spirit who is a person, we have looked at him as the Numa and the Ruach. We have looked at him as one who is a person, not a thing. He has personalities just like you and me. And also, we find that he works the same type of work that God works in creation. And the last thing that we looked at was the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Christ, and is spoken of in such connection with God and Christ that it shows they are of the, are the same divine nature. You can't separate them. You can't separate them. And although we find the different dispensation that they work in, so to speak, God from creation, working with the children of Israel, right down to the death of Jesus Christ, we find that law came into being, God worked with the children of Israel, Christ's birth, and then Christ died, and then the church came into being, and the Holy Spirit now rules in our lives and controls our lives. And so we look at some scriptures there, and we won't go through all of them now, but if we look at Corinthians there, and we say there are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but the same God working all of them in all men. And we look at all three of them working right there. Okay, the Holy Spirit giving gifts. Um, Jesus Christ, service. Different kinds of service, but the same Lord. And there are different kinds of working but the same God who works them all in all. All right, and we looked at that. So the connection is there. All right, all these are the scriptures. The connection is there. So tonight, we want to embark upon the Holy Spirit. How did the Holy Spirit help Christ? How did the Holy Spirit help Jesus Christ? As Christ was here on earth, working, performing miracles, doing the work of God. We look at Jesus Christ as the God-man on earth. We talk about his incarnation, all right? How God took on flesh and came to earth and walked among us. Though he was God, yet he was man at the same time. And both God and man, yes, as God, he put aside some of his, his glory and he came, but he was God. He was God, fully God. Because at his disposal, he had God's power, God's Holy Spirit working in and through his life. And so tonight we want to look at the Holy Spirit. How did the Holy Spirit help Jesus Christ? All right? And so tonight we want to look at the first thing that he was conceived in the womb of Mary by the Holy Spirit. He was conceived in the womb of Mary by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> um, here we find prophecy being fulfilled, okay? And the fact that Christ, Christ's Father, okay, as it were, is God. God's Holy Spirit, he came upon Mary, as we'll see the scripture, and he planted, as it were, created a miracle and planted a seed there and fertilized an egg in Mary. And so Christ, he took on human flesh as well as he was the God-man because we see where the Holy Spirit was the one at work here 
to bring about the birth of Jesus Christ. So here we go with the scriptures. Matthew 1, 18 through 20, and St. Luke 1, 34, 35. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. This is a miracle in itself. Because for you and me, what? We need a male and female to come together for conception to take place. But in this case, there wasn't a male that was required. God created a miracle in himself in fertilizing that egg. And mark you, God can do anything. In the beginning again, what God did God created man. <laughs> God created man. He did not even need a womb to create man and woman, that first Adam and Eve. No, he did not. He created them and then he provided the means through which procreation could come. All right? Male and female coming together and conception take place. But here it is, God intervened to bring Christ into this world, to bring himself into this world by fertilizing that egg in Mary, Mary's womb. Well, you know, know there's the fallopian tube and everything, and then the both um, egg and sperm, you know, child grows in the womb. So here we find the Holy Spirit intervening so that the birth of Christ could take place. God could have come in human form just like that. As a matter of fact, God could have come down and just like what he did in history when he presented himself before Abraham and others, he could have taken on flesh, all right, and present himself. But what God did was to take on flesh but he being God at the same time. So he was a God-man coming to earth. And the Holy Spirit had an important role in bringing about that. And remember when we talk about the Holy Spirit, we talk about God's Spirit. God's Spirit. So here again, we find when Christ refers to God as his Father, it was God who cause that fertilization and cause Christ to come about, to become a God-man, a child growing, growing, growing until adult stage. So we find the Holy Spirit in play here. The Holy Spirit in play. I'm um, going back to verse 18. It says together, it says together she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. It wasn't of human will. It wasn't of um, Joseph's will. But it was God intervening in the affairs of men to bring about Christ, to bring about himself in mankind. But we find the, the announcement. The announcement to Mary by Gabriel. All right? In St. Luke. And these are just two scriptures, two verses out of the whole conversation there that he had with her. How will this be? Mary asked the angel. Since I'm a virgin, all right, did not know a man. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you so the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Will be called the Son of God. And even though Christ was called the Son of David, yeah. Yet it was not true human birth. But as the King of kings and Lord of lords and from the tribe of Judah, yes, 
is king eternal, he's king everlasting. But here we find that the Holy Spirit, through his power, came and he became the Son of God. So the Holy Spirit was instrumental in bringing about the conception of Jesus Christ and birth of Jesus Christ. He was. So you find, you see the work in there of God working with his son Jesus Christ. All right? God's spirit working with his son Jesus Christ. And you cannot separate them. Again, I'll say it. You cannot separate them as some religious group separate them. Saying God is a, is a title. Okay? Um, the spirit is a force and Jesus Christ is the only person there. No. All three are persons. It's just that God came down and become the God-man, took on flesh, so he could mingle with all of us, okay? With human flesh. So he had that, that part to play. He was very instrumental in bringing about birth of Jesus Christ. It wasn't by man. It wasn't by man. It wasn't. Jesus was filled from birth with the Holy Spirit. Would you agree? <laughs> uh, if Jesus had the DNA <laughs> of God in him, uh, through conception, it was the Holy Spirit that bring about his conception. Then he must be filled with the Holy Spirit. I give you a cross reference there of John the Baptist in Luke 1, 15. Luke 1, 15 says, as Again, the angel is speaking to Zechariah. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never to take wine or other fermented drink. And he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even from birth. That was John the Baptist. And John the Baptist's father and mother were flesh. Yet God enabled him from in the womb to be filled, to be empowered with the Holy Spirit. So John the Baptist can be filled with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and he had um, both fleshly appearance. Then what about Christ, who had God the Eternal as his Father? So those two scriptures as I shared um, earlier, they can apply right here. That Jesus Christ was filled from birth with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit had full control over his life. But if you can remember, I don't have it up there. In, in Luke 2, when Jesus Christ, they went to Jerusalem, and Jesus Christ was in the temple, and he was reasoning with the, with the doctors, the teachers of the law, and Mary, Mary, and they found him. And then Mary said to him, <laughs> All right, they said in verse, that is Luke chapter 2, verse 47. They found him. Everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. Verse 49. Why were you searching for me? He asked. Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? <laughs> but they did not understand what he, was, what he was saying to them. Then he went down to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. But his mother treasured all these things in her heart. <laughs> yes, Mary might not have uh, understood exactly, but Mary knew where Christ was coming from. Mary knew that he was the son of God because Mary got that message. And also, even though Joseph we didn't hear much about him, but Joseph knew exactly too that he was the son of God. He was conceived through the Holy Spirit. So John was filled from birth. If John was filled, then Christ 
Christ was filled also. He was filled with God's Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came upon him, on him at his baptism. So you talk about conception, you talk about his birth, you talk about baptism. The Holy Spirit was right there. God given confirmation of the good and the righteous act of baptism. Although Jesus Christ was not a sinner, he was sinless, sinless yet God gave his approval of his baptism. Of his baptism. So Matthew 3, 13 through 17, and John 1, 32 and 33. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you. And do you come to me? Wouldn't you do the same? <laughs> because you, John, who was filled from birth, filled by the Holy Spirit, God said that, listen, the man whom you see, the dove, you're going to see it come upon, the Holy Spirit come upon, is the one who will baptize, okay, others with the Holy Spirit. So John recognized when John said, ah, but I'm the sinner here. <laughs> I need to be baptized by you. I need to be baptized by you. Ah, well, let us go. Jesus replied, let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. It is proper to do this to fulfill all righteousness. Although Jesus Christ was not a sinner and John's baptism was one unto repentance, not for salvation, yet Christ, as a precursor to baptism itself, okay, Christ said, This is what is right. And I need to fulfill this. And now doesn't baptism save us? It's a part of the God's plan to save the entire world. Faith is a part of the whole process. Repentance is a part of the whole process. Baptism is a part of the process too. The being filled, full, being, being filled with the Holy Spirit is a part of the process too. So John recognized that Jesus Christ was pure holiness, true holiness. But Christ said, suffer it now. Allow it, allow it. To fulfill all righteousness? Yes. And John baptized him. We need to understand too that baptism fulfilled the righteousness of Almighty God. We need to understand that. Okay? We need to. And it's not a sacrament. Okay, that you can forego as the salvation army will teach. All right? Or others. No. It is important. It, it is essential to our salvation. The, the, the Matthew. Oh, oh, oh I, didn't tell, I didn't bring the Luke one. Okay, the John one. Okay? John 1, 32 and 33. We can look at that one. Let, it, it's not on the board, so let us read it. It's the same John the Baptist. This is what it says, but it just gives a little more information. Then John gave this testimony. I saw the Spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him. I would not have known him except that the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, the man whom you see, the Spirit come down and remain, is he who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. All right? I have seen and I testify that this is the Son of God. So if we were to read the entire text, you'll find that at his baptism, and when he was coming up, he came up out of the water, the dove descended upon him. The dove descended upon him. And in so descending, God gave his approval upon the righteous act 
of Jesus Christ, but also gave his approval upon his son to identify his son to John the Baptist that here I, God, approve of my son and he is the son of God. But then what was the sign to John? That the Holy Spirit will come and this is the person, this is the Christ who would baptize with the Holy Spirit. You and I, in our baptism, what do we experience? We experience repentance, sorrow for sin. We experience that. But also we believe God's word, what God has said to us, that we need to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, that we need to come to him and confess our sins. Also, it says that we need to be baptized for the removal of our sins. And then he said we will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. God's Holy Spirit. John's baptism was not one of salvation. Repentance, change your ways, change your habits. But Christ came and said, I will give you my Holy Spirit now to live in you. To live in you. Alright? And now the Holy Spirit live in us. In us. So we thank God. Apart from that, we know that on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came. Alright? We know that. And we'll study that. Oh, this, this, this would have been the scripture. Let us run on. Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. At the same time, Luke says he was full of the Holy Spirit. After his baptism, <laughs> this is the chronological order we're looking at. We're looking at some order here. After his baptism, we talk about his con this conception, his birth, baptism, at age 30 when he was about to start his ministry, now the Holy Spirit led him. King James says, another version said, drove him into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And we know that that was for 40 days hmm? among the wild animals in the wilderness. But it says here in Luke, Luke 4 verse 1, at the same time Luke says he was full of, of the Holy Spirit. So you're talking about the Holy Spirit came upon him fully at his baptism and then the Holy Spirit says, okay, now go. Let him into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. But he was full with the Holy Spirit. Let's go before we, we look at Jesus full of the Holy Spirit returned from the Jordan and was led by the Holy Spirit in the desert. Full of the Holy Spirit. Matthew says, all right, oh, I didn't put Matthew up there. He was led in the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. But he had the Holy Spirit fully in control of his life. Now for you and me, like Jesus Christ, shouldn't we be filled with the Holy Spirit every single day of our lives? Don't we face temptation every single day of our lives? Every day. What it says here is that through the Holy Spirit, Christ was empowered, he was energized, and he had the fullness of God's Spirit to help him to overcome every temptation that the devil brought about. Every one of them. He had help 
As we were, we are going to see, we're going to talk about, you know, another counselor. But he, he had the help of the Holy Spirit. And Christ was not afraid to, to encounter the devil and to overcome the devil through what the Holy Spirit empowered him with. For one, Christ knew the word of God. Huh? Christ knew the word of God. As a matter of fact, at one point in time, Christ said that his words are spirit and they are life. They are spirit and they are life. They are God breathe. They give life. They energize. And if you were to go to St. Matthew chapter 4, 1 through 11, we are not going to go through all of the, the, the temptation here. But here, the full temptation, we find, he said, after the 40 days, we, we find, he said, hey, here is bread. Jesus was very hungry. Turn these stones into bread. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Here it is, the spirit-empowered man, the spirit-empowered person knows the scripture, knows the word of God, will not allow himself or herself to go without studying, without meditating, without reading, without committing the word of God to their heart. Christ said it is written. When he said, jump off the pinnacle of the temple, and his angels will bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Christ said, you must not tempt the Lord your God. It is written. Don't tempt the Lord your God. Christ was saying, I, you know, I am God, Satan. And you mean you want to come and tempt me with, with, with popularity? Huh? Because if Christ had done that and the people saw him floating down, they would have made him their earthly king because they look forward to the Messiah floating down from heaven. Do not. It is written. It is written. And he showed them the kingdoms of the world. All the pleasures, the money, whatever. And he said, bow down and worship me. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only you shall serve. Okay? So the spirit man, Christ was empowered, but you and I have the spirit of God in us too. When we look at the whole fulfillment, our, 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 the filling of, of God's Holy Spirit of our lives, we talk about the full control of our lives, then we must understand that nothing of our lives must be in our control, but all must be in the control of Almighty God. All must be. Christ was in the control of God. And Christ, whatever Christ did, Christ did not do it for himself. He did it because the Father told him and he was pleasing his Father in all he did. And we must please God in all we do. Everything we do. Christ was filled. He was empowered. But look what happened after he came back from the, the, the temptation. After he came back from the temptation and went into Galilee, Jesus returned from the temptation in the power of the Holy Spirit. Luke 4, verse 14. But let us look a little bit more on that. Okay? Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit and news about him spread through the whole country. The entire country. Jesus returned in the power of the Holy Spirit. I, I, I like that. I like that. This was a fulfillment, by the way. A prophecy through Isaiah. Through Isaiah 61. 
Uh, there it is. I, I have it. Okay. All right. I have it. It's coming up. It's coming up. Isaiah 61. It says that he came in the power of the Holy Spirit. When we overcome Satan's temptation, when you and I um, gain the victory in Christ, how do you feel? <laughs> huh? Do you, do, you, do you just say, uh, you know, yeah, I'm overcome that. You know, and you go about your business regularly. You, you praise God, you glorify God, because here it is, you see the power of God working in and through your life to overcome Satan. To overcome his demonic forces. To overcome his agents. You see that? And, and here it is for you and me. Uh, it, it, it is as if Christ said, yes! <laughs> uh, overcome the arch enemy. Uh, overcome Satan himself. Not that he couldn't, you know. <laughs> I, and, and, and he came with turn to Galilee in the power of the Spirit. In the power of the Spirit. Christ was ready at this time to embark upon his ministry. To embark upon the ministry. And the power of the Holy Spirit, as we are going to see in another, another slide, there was nothing that was missing from Christ. Exerting the full power of God through miracles and healing and casting out demons and all. Nothing was exempt. Nothing. Christ came in the power of the Holy Spirit. The man was fully charged. <laughs> he was well charged. Ready to go. Nothing, no, nothing could stop your mind. That's why Christ was not a coward. Christ would not cower with all of the Pharisees and Sadducees, what they were talking about. You know, because he knew his time, he knew exactly his mission, and he came to fulfill all of that. But he returned from the temptation through the, the baptism into the wilderness and remember 40 days and 40 nights man through fasting and praying you must be charged up if one can deny their body their desire the desires of the body so that they can meditate they can reflect upon God they can be empowered Powered with God's spirit. When you come back, man, believe me, nothing can stop you, man. And you and I must, for 2021, we must engage in prayer and fasting some more. We need to spend some more time in that. So that God can recharge us, revive us. And, and, and empower us. And I say to you, my brethren, it's time we see some more empowerment of the Holy Spirit in our lives. It's time. It's time. But we have to be at the place where God can recharge us, where God can empower us, where the Holy Spirit can have full control. <laughs> Again, I want to say, you know, Although we have the indwelt Holy Spirit, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit at baptism, that's not just it. You and I must allow God to have full control over our entire being, our actions, our word, everything. Everything. We must. We must. Yes, when we, we talk about, um, you know, resisting the Holy Spirit and also quenching the Holy Spirit and grieving the Holy Spirit. That's a part of the process when, because we don't make him have full control over our lives. We don't allow him to. We don't allow him to. 
Let us run on. Jesus declared that the Spirit was upon him, therefore fulfilled Isaiah prophecy. Luke 4, 18, um, Isaiah 61, 1 and 2. Luke 4, 18. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord. Christ's ministry was one of coming to seek and to save the lost. But within that, he came, my brethren, because he was anointed. <laughs> going, through, going through a sermon series now, you know. <laughs> uh, 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 you know. But he was anointed. He was anointed, set apart to preach the good news to the poor, to proclaim freedom for the prisoners, recovery of sight to the blind, to release the oppressed and to declare the year of Jubilee. Spiritually, as well as physically. Because Christ has, Christ has set us free, hasn't he? Yeah, many of us were prisoners of Satan, prisoners of our, of our own doing. But thanks be unto God, he has set us free. We were blind. Like today, I saw many blind followers, you know, in the States. Blind. That even when the truth confronts us, we refuse to accept the truth and the oppress, physically and spiritually. So this was a part of Christ's ministry that he came on earth to perform. This was. You and I have ministry too. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Christ said that. Christ knew that. The Spirit was in control of Christ's life. You and I must have full, the Spirit must have full control of our lives so that we can perform the ministry of God here on earth. Yes. We can, we can. The Holy Spirit had full control. And that's why Christ was able, you know, oftentimes Christ rebuked his very apostles. Oh, ye have little faith. Of you and me, how oh, ye have little faith. If God is in full control of our lives, if we have been approved and anointed by Almighty God, then you and I, my brethren, must be ready to perform the unthinkable. Allow God to work it through us. Through faith. Through believing God. But we must put ourselves in the position that God can use us. God can use us. Christ was used, and Christ, man, he worked mightily, mightily throughout his ministry. But here is, here is Matthew. Matthew states that Isaiah 41 and following was fulfilled in Jesus Christ. This was Matthew. In Jesus Christ, look what the scripture says here. Go from 17. This was to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Here is my servant whom I have chosen, the one I love, in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him, and he will proclaim justice to the nation. Jesus Christ had the spirit of God, and he would proclaim justice to the nation. Jesus Christ was the fairest of them all. <laughs> Jesus Christ was fair. He was just in all he did. You know all he did? Because the Spirit was upon him. 
my spirit on him. I will put my spirit on him. God's spirit was upon Jesus Christ in everything he did. Everywhere he went. Christ often said that the, my word is not my word, but the one who sent me. Huh? What I do, I don't do of myself. I do it because of God working in me. I and my Father are one. The Holy Spirit. God was in control of Christ. God's Spirit endowed Christ fully. Endowed Christ fully. Jesus Christ said in the same Matthew. Jesus cast out demons by the power of the Holy Spirit. Especially verse 28. If we, if we were to go from verse 22, we find Jesus casting out demons. Okay? It's not uh, uh, up there. Let us, let us go into the scripture. I'll go from 22 and read quickly. Because here you find the Pharisees. Jesus casts out demons. Okay? I'll leave 28 up there. Jesus cast out demons and they were saying that Jesus cast out demons by Beelzebub. Hmm. Verse 22. Then they brought him a demon-possessed man who was blind and mute. And Jesus healed him so that he could both talk and see. All the people were astonished, astonished and said, Could this be the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard this, they said, it is only by Beelzebub, the prince of demons, that this fellow drives out demons. Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself will be ruined, and every city or household divided against itself will not stand. If Satan drive out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then can his kingdom stand? And if I drive out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your people drive them out? So then they will be your judge. But if I drive out demons by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Verse 28. If, if, you, if I drive out demons, if I cast out demons by the power of Almighty God, by the Holy Spirit, then you are in trouble. The kingdom of God has come upon you because Satan can't cast out Satan. That's a divided kingdom. Only God can cast out Satan. So the kingdom of God has come upon you. It is in your face. You see the full demonstration of the kingdom of God. And, and, and you need to be aware that it is God you're speaking about. It is God's kingdom you're speaking about. So let us run down. Same chapter. Let us run down to, to verse. Or verse 31. And so I tell you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven men. Sorry, let me, let me run up. Verse 30. He who is not with me is against me. And he who does not gather with me scatter. And so I tell you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven men. But the blasphemy against the spirit will not be forgiven. Okay? Anyone who speaks a word against the son of man will be forgiven. But anyone who speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven either in this age or in the age to come. You know what they were doing? They were ascribing godliness to the devil. So they, in, in, by virtue of that fact, they were slandering God. They were saying God's spirit was doing evil, casting out evil by evil, by doing evil. And Christ said, you are blaspheming. You are taking what is holy and cast it to the dogs as it, as it were. You are giving it to Satan. And he said if you continue doing this. Blasphemy is a continuous thing. 
you, you have knowledge, you know the truth, and you refuse to acknowledge the truth, and you continue to ascribe the truth to evil. Because here it is. If it was a one-off thing, Paul would have been a man gone to hell. He would not have been a, um, become a, an apostle. Yeah? Because he blasphemed against God. Blasphemed against the Holy Spirit. Because he called the Christians a cult and he seek to destroy it. But no, God saved him. But these Pharisees, they knew what they were doing. And Christ said, you are a child of hell if you don't repent. If you don't repent, you'll become a child of hell. And that's why when people of the world, they know what they were doing, what they're doing. When a Rastaman called a Christian, you know, all kind of name, or they call us Greece can or whatever. Uh, they are, they are Christian, they are devil picnic and talk like that. They are blaspheming. Because it is God's spirit who works in you. Okay? Who has made you his child. And they are saying that you are the devil picnic. The devil causing them to do that. But hey, their consciousness. Know that hey, you are living right. You are living right. Because you're doing what is right. And oftentimes because of they, they are convicted of their wrongs why they try to pull you down. Why they try to pull you down. Jesus rejoiced in the Holy Spirit. The full story, Luke 10, 17 to 24, I won't read it. But remember when Christ sent out his apostles? He sent out his apostles as well as he sent out the 72 also. Okay, two by two. And what happened? The scripture said that they came back rejoicing that the spirit, okay, the spirit, the, the, the demons were cast out and the spirit obeyed them. That is the demonic spirit. And they rejoiced. And Christ said, you know, don't rejoice because the spirit, <laughs> the cast out. Rejoice that your name is written in, in heaven. Okay? Rejoice because of that. But here is the scripture. Okay, the 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. He replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the powers of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. However, do not rejoice that the Spirit submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. At that time, Jesus, full of joy through the Holy Spirit, said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this was your good pleasure. You see why Jesus rejoiced? Jesus rejoiced that all of these men, they weren't doctors, they weren't scholars, the prophets of all, God did not reveal all of these to them. And Christ said, I rejoice, my joy is full in the Holy Spirit. That through your spirit, God, you have, a, you have empowered these men to go out and cast out demons and do healing and miracles. I rejoice. I rejoice. Doesn't Christ rejoice when you and I go out there in the power of the Holy Spirit and perform his work? And perform his work. Yes. Yes. And Christ rejoiced. That these things were hidden from the wise and prudent and revealed to the babe and the suckling. Yes, men who weren't prideful, who weren't pompous, but made themselves available. Christ rejoiced in the Holy Spirit. Jesus was fully endowed with the Holy Spirit. We, we looked at that, but here is John the Baptist. In verse 34, John the Baptist giving his testimony of Christ. John the Baptist said, For the one whom God has sent, sent speaks the word of God. For God gives the spirit without limit or without limitation. 
God did not give Christ his Holy Spirit in incrementally. No. Remember in the Old Testament what happened? Like a, a Samson, the Spirit come upon Samson, leave Samson. Some of the prophets, they, they, they left them. Okay, so they were restricted. But with Christ, not so. With Christ, Christ was full of the Holy Spirit. He was full of the Holy Spirit. And John said, you know, there was, you, you talk about quality measure and quantity of measure. Christ was the fullness of the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Well, let me ask you the question. Can you be filled full measure with the Holy Spirit? You can. You can. It's not like the Holy Spirit give us half a measure and give Christ full measure. No. The same Holy Spirit that Christ got is the same Holy Spirit we have. And because the same Holy Spirit, when we allow God's Spirit to have full control again, we can do great exploits for God. We can do great things for God. Colossians 1.19. Just want to bring in this one because Colossians tells us that, although it doesn't talk about the Spirit, but it says that God, that God in Christ, we are the fullness of God. It says, for God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him. Start, if you start reading from verse 15, yeah? he's the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created, things in heaven and earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things were created by him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things, all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church, he is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. Verse 19, for God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him. Everything. Everything. The only thing that, was, that is lacking for us is the fact that we weren't the creator. <laughs> you know? And we, 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 are, we are not, so, so to speak, a part of God, divinity, the triune God, the Godhead. Christ was, and Christ had no limit when it comes to the Holy Spirit. Christ had no limit, none. So the Holy Spirit was right there, right there, helping Christ throughout his ministry, throughout his daily, daily walk, every single day. Jesus refers to the Holy Spirit as another comforter. We are coming down. Just about two more slides or so with the scripture. All right? Another comforter. The Greek word, parakletos or paraklete in, in history. Literally, a person summoned to one aid. All right? Or a person who comes alongside. All right? The spirit function is to represent God to the believers as Jesus did in his incarnate state. In coming to earth, he represented God. The spirit also represents God. So John 14, 15 through 18. If you love me, you will obey what I command. And, if I, will, and I will ask the Father and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. Remember Jesus was one counselor. <laughs> he walked with them. But now he said I will send you another counselor. Or another aid. Another helper. Another advocate. To help you along. And praise God for the Holy Spirit. I can't do without his help every single day. We can't. So he sent another counselor. The spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him. Because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him. For he lives with you and will be in you. Praise God. Praise God. That's the other counselor. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. We are not orphans. The spirit of God lives in us. We are his children. 
we are his children. Last one. The Holy Spirit was to glorify Christ, bear witness of him, take from Christ, and declare it to the apostles. Our scriptures. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is there yet to come. So when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. All right? He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears. And didn't the Holy Spirit guide him into all truth, inspiration, all of that? Yeah, remind him of what Christ said. He guided them into all truth. But also it says, he will bring glory to me by taking from what is mine and making it known to you. He will bring glory to Christ. All that belongs to the Father's mind. That is why I said the Spirit will take from what is mine and make it known to you. The Spirit came to glorify Christ. All right? It's, it's, it's something else though. And, and I will say to you, you realize that Christ did not command us to pray to the Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> Even though he's God's spirit. Huh? We talk to God. But he did not command us to really pray. Pray to the spirit. He said pray in the spirit. Okay. What not pray to the spirit? Because the spirit prays for us. All right. But the spirit came to glorify Christ. All that the spirit does through his word and through you and me is to glorify Christ. Christ because Christ came for that purpose to die for our sins and through him now we're reminded to glorify Christ big up Christ every time every time the spirit came to glorify Christ and also to testify when the counselor comes I will send you to when the counselor comes whom I will send to you from the father the spirit of truth who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. He will testify of my truth, of my power, of my deeds, what I have done. And if you were to continue in verse 27, Christ said, you apostles will testify of me also. You will testify of me. We are, we are people who must testify of the power of God in us. And through us. We must testify of Jesus Christ. The Spirit does that every single day. Every time you are convicted. And I am convinced also. That Jesus Christ is Lord. That Jesus Christ died for us. What Jesus Christ has done for us. is our living hope. What the word has said about him. Every time. It's the Spirit working in us. The Spirit working in us. So the Spirit came. As a representative of God to testify of Christ. I pray that you and I will testify of him as we continue to live every single day. So the spirit was there with Christ all throughout his ministry. All throughout his ministry. The spirit empowered him. He walked in the spirit. He lived in the spirit. He was controlled by the spirit. He, he even passed on the spirit. <laughs> his apostles you and I must remember that so Christ did not come to do his own thing he came to do the father's will and the spirit was right there and they were all working together as one God the father God the son God the Holy Spirit amen amen so God willing next week we'll continue to look at another aspect of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen.